The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, and welcome to the webinar. We're glad that you're joining us today. My name is Elizabeth Connolly, and I am Vice President of Education Partnerships for CPP Innovation Labs. I wanted to start this morning with just a brief PowerPoint to tell you a little bit about the iLabs team and Vita Navis. Um, and then we're going to also get into a demonstration of some of the tools available in the platform. But to begin with, I wanted to just do a quick housekeeping item. Um, all attendees are in listen only mode. However, I do welcome your questions if you have any as we go through the presentation and certainly as we wrap up, if you have questions, there is a chat feature in the GoToWebinar menu. So feel free to use that to type your questions and I'll be sure to try to keep an eye on that as questions come through. Um, in the event that you're not familiar with CPP to begin with, let me just tell you a bit about our company. We are primarily known as the Myers-Briggs Company, um, but we offer several other assessments in addition to the Myers-Briggs. We work with education partners as well as in business and in government. Um, and in terms of our education partnerships, we currently work with about 2,800 institutions across the U.S. and across the globe as well. Um, so your institution may in fact be using the Myers-Briggs or perhaps one of our other assessments called the Strong Interest Inventory. The iLabs team at CPP was developed really to deepen our focus on education and to help address some of the concerns that we currently face with education. And so I like to start our, our discussions about Vita Navis with um, sort of taking a very high level view of some of the issues that drive us, that we're passionate about, and that led to the creation of uh, the platform Vita Navis by the iLabs team. Um, the thinking was to look at what we had in the CPP toolkit um, and, and, and the mission, by the way, of CPP, the company, is always to help individuals learn more about themselves with the, the goal of improvement um, and always having professional development and personal development be at the key of what we do. Um, and so we figured we should start um, at the earliest possible point with folks to start with them while they're in school. And so the, the iLabs team currently, we are partnered with K-12 institutions as well as higher education institutions in delivering the Vita Navis platform that we're gonna talk about today. But at that high level, one of the things that concerns our team, and I know concerns all of us who work in higher education, is the, the low or relatively low number of adults in the US who have some type of post-secondary credential. We used to, as a nation, um, be among the tops internationally in terms of the number of our adults who had some type of post-secondary credential, be that a certificate um, or a degree. Um, and, and we're no longer even in the top 10. We've slipped, and that's reflected by the fact that less than half of our adults as of 2014 had some type of post-secondary um, education under their belt. And on the flip side, we know that that leads to um, a deficit for the nation when we see um, organizations like Georgetown Public Policy predicting that 65% of U.S. jobs in just about a year and a half from now, um, by 2020, will require some type of post-secondary post education. And more disturbing in that is that the, the trend is not really getting better, and we see, and what you see on this slide here, are some images taken from a few different presentations that, that I've sat in on, uh, some at a conference put on by the American Association for Community Colleges, um, and some other data that I've pulled from other places on the web. But all of this speaks to um, the fact that we have a, a significant number of high school students who graduate and don't immediately either enroll in some type of post-secondary um, institution or um, in the case of one of the images you see here, which is from uh, one of our partners in San Diego County, Cajon Valley, they were tracking that not only were students not enrolled in college, but they also weren't um, tra uh, be traced to being uh, employed. Um, and there, there are, are sources you can go to where you can see state by state, what does that figure look like? And around nationally, most, most states do have more than 50% of their 
high school graduates going directly into college. But in a few states, a handful of states, and I won't name them in case yours is one of them, that number is below 50%. And in certain uh, areas, uh, Houston is what's represented in the upper left-hand corner on this slide. Uh, a Houston area high school district reporting that uh, around 40% of their students had enrolled. So um, pretty sad numbers. And, um, and then in a report that came out just a few weeks ago from NCES, um, they found that between 2010 and 2016, overall undergraduate enrollment decreased by 7%. And so we wonder why is that the case? Um, we know that there's negative press about um, is there value in higher education? Probably uh, press about student loan debt has led to that. Um, but it really is a reflection of the fact that people aren't aware of the options that are, are out there for them and what opportunities exist for them. The other thing that we look at um, is when we do actually get students enrolled, how successful are we in supporting them through the process to complete? And we work with partner institutions who have wonderful retention rates of 80% or higher and, and some you know, uh, very admirable graduation rates as well, but they still wanna do better because it's not enough um, to, to keep 90% of our students. We wanna keep 100% if we can. We know that's probably pie in the sky, but when we look at rates like 56.9 uh, for the six year completion rates um, and the fact that almost half of students who started at a two year institution were no longer enrolled after six years and had not completed something, um, we find that there's obviously a disconnect. And the same is reflected from organizations like Complete College America, which you may be familiar with, that speaks to the, the results of students who take longer to complete or who don't complete. Um, and the, the cost to the student and the cost to the taxpayers and the cost to us as a nation, but most importantly, the cost to the students. So we, we, we took a step back and we thought, why are we facing these challenges? What is leading so few students to enroll? What is um, at the root of students not being able to complete their programs? And we know that there are different factors involved, right? We know particularly at community colleges, a lot of students are part-time and that presents challenges if you're trying to work and go to school. But a significant part of the problem we found in, in talking with institutions and in doing research on the subject matter is just that students are overwhelmed by choices. So one of our missions is to really reverse one of the current paradigms, which is the thinking we've had for many years that students show up to campus and they know what it is that they need to do and want to do, that they know what they want to study, that they know what career they want to pursue after they have graduated. And we, we don't make it much easier for them because most colleges and universities have upwards of 100 or more majors or programs to choose from. And so students are, are really on option overload as we like to call it. To compound that, um, we found that, uh, that it's, it's even more challenging for students to try to figure out what path to take because they often have challenges in meeting face-to-face -face with advisors or counselors on campus. According to Nakata, um, the mean across all sizes and types of institutions across the country, the mean ratio of student to counselor or advisor is about one to just under 300. But as we get to public institutions, that number goes as high as one to 900 or even higher. I'm based in California and we have some institutions that report a ratio of one to a thousand or one to 1200. Um, the mean or the average rather um, is about one to 600. So that's, that's difficult then for the student to get that base time. And it's difficult for an advisor to be able to spend quality time with the student when they actually do are, are able to sit down and meet with them face to face. So these are things that we, we thought about. Um, there's obviously a need nationally to uh, raise awareness to people of the opportunities available if they pursue some type of secondary education. Um, we, we need to find a way to uh, get that information to them. And when they do decide to go to school, they need to have some type of decision-making program that is going to be meaningful. It's going to allow them to make more informed decisions. Um, and so that's where CPPI Labs took a step back and said, first of all, what do we have in our CPP toolkit that we can use to help address this problem? 
Um, and as I mentioned before, and you probably or may have known rather uh, before you joined the webinar today, we're known for our assessments. So we have the, the Myers-Briggs, we have the Strong Interest Inventory, we have an assessment called the CPI 260. And so some of these assessments are personality-based assessments, um, and others like the Strong Interest Inventory is based on interests. And we delve into research around um, what what would be the most appropriate tool for us to focus on and the substantial body of research that we've taken a look at has shown that interest fit is a strong for prediction of employment outcomes academic success and so forth than even personality and if you think about it or at least when i think about it I, I think that makes quite a bit of sense um, even without delving into the research because if we're interested in something we're more likely to be engaged, right? Uh, I know uh, the subjects that I liked in school, I probably was a little bit more committed to than the ones that I knew I just had to take because it was required. But if students are interested, they become more motivated, um, they have more goal-oriented behaviors, and they're more likely to persist and get through to goal and attainment. And we even have some research that shows um, in looking at personality, ability, and interest over time and over an academic Academic, um, a career into actual working career, interest is a much stronger indication of success. So we, we looked at our strong interest inventory as being uh, one of the key tools for uh, developing a way to reach more students. And so the first thing that we did uh, was to, to address another paradigm. And that paradigm is in the world of assessments, where traditionally on campus, Assessments have most often been um, managed by career centers, although sometimes they may be in a college, like a career, uh, an education college, for example. I, I took the Myers-Briggs when I was working on my doctorate in education. Um, and most times these assessments may be something the students require to pay for. The assessments generally take 35 to 45 minutes to complete, and we know that that may be a deterrent for students who often um, have short attention spans. Um, and the assessments require that they sit down with a certified practitioner to review their results and to understand their results. And so what we hear from our partner institutions is that they're not really able to reach very many students on a, a term basis or even an academic year basis. Only a handful, and usually those are students that either are um, self-aware and know that they need this additional help or they're directed because the school may have a policy in place that if the student um, has to wants to change their major or hasn't declared that they go. Um, so we took the, the strong in inventory um, assessment and we uh, made it in a way that is more accessible for more students. So step one was to hire a data scientist to make sure that the, the super strong version is as reliable and as um, accurate as the strong inventory has been and has is the gold standard really um, and we made an assessment that a student can complete in 10 minutes or less it's mobile enabled so that students can complete it on their smartphone um, and we made it uh, available in a platform it's a platform actually I should have said that's uh, accessible by the the smartphone or tablet or or their laptop um, so we created Vita Navis the platform to make access to assessments more universal. And the whole goal of this is really to level the playing field. So instead of just that few handful of students who are able to benefit from exploration through the Career Center by taking assessment, all students can gain access to both that assessment as well as tools for educational and career exploration by gaining all of that data from the students that complete the assessment within the platform counselors first can get individual student access to help support their case management and student counseling and schools get aggregated data that help give them better information um, quantifiable information about interests of their students across the board other things about their learning styles their work styles so that these things can be used on an individual basis to help students on a group basis to help create workshops um, and then for resource planning, institutions can see, particularly if they may be, um, as many of our community colleges are, as they're developing guided pathways, 
um, figuring out when they are, are, are targeting for meta majors or communities or whatever they may be calling those meta majors, where are most of their students' interests lying? Are we getting a lot of students coming in that are focused on health sciences or is it in some other field? And as we rolled out with our partner institutions, and we currently have uh, over 90 campuses that are working with us between our K-12 and our higher education partners, and that number is, is growing steadily, um, as they've surveyed their students, the students are saying that they find taking the assessment and using the exploration tools to be very valuable. Um, number one, 98% of the students who um, began the super strong assessment completed it and overall completion rates across our campuses are upwards of 90%. Um, we just met yesterday with one of our community college partners in Denver um, and they had over a thousand students um, during orientation complete the assessment on their phones um, and they had of those students about 50 who had said that they didn't know what program they wanted to pursue, and 90% of those students had selected a program after completing this process. So we, we hear our students saying that, yes, this is helpful. It helps me feel better equipped to make decisions. I'm gonna pause there um, and give everyone an opportunity if you're interested to um, ask a question in the chat box as I segue out and go into our demo platform. I'm going to show you today a couple of different things within the interface. We're going to first take a look at the student experience within Vita Navis, and then I'll also show you some of that data and tools that I mentioned that are available both to advisors and other frontline student staff, uh, service members, staff members, um, as well as some of the data that administrators are interested in taking a look at, and even um, tools that faculty could use as part of student success initiatives. So I'm not seeing any questions in the chat box, so I'll go ahead and, and start first with the student experience in Vita Navis. I'm not going to show you today the assessment itself, but I would like to invite you to take it if you're interested. You will receive a follow-up email following the webinar today. Um, and that email will include access to the platform um, to take the assessment. And then you can actually take a self-guided tour on your own if you're interested of, in what I'm going to show you here. But um, the assessment, as I mentioned, can be completed in less than 10 minutes. It can be done on a mobile device. And it's basically the, the way that we've made it more easy for students to use is it's very task focused. Um, and students can basically just tap and swipe and tap and swipe and finish. Once I have completed the assessment, the, uh, it'll, I'll be taken to the platform to what you're seeing right here, which is my super strong results. So if you're not familiar with RIASEC, which you know a number of us maybe are not, you'll be able to learn a little bit more about what that means. Um, so what does each one of these codes mean? Now my interest code I'm told is EAS. So an enterprising is one of those code letters, but I can click on any of these, even the ones that aren't me, and I can find out what, what are realistic people like, what are investigative people like, conventional, artistic, enterprising, and social. So I can learn on my own. I don't have to have that practitioner to sit down with me and explain uh, to me what my codes mean. We delve a little bit deeper with our, our top three occupational themes, enterprising, artistic, and social are mine. And we find out a little bit about what that means in terms of um, what would I like to do for work activities, potential skills, values, and so forth. Then we also provide information about personal styles. And here's where the data is not only beneficial for students, but you'll see when we get to looking at some of the administrator tools, um, helping to get that peek into what are the preferred work styles of most of my students in my classroom or students that I'm working that are part of my caseload as an advisor. So I can see what my work style is, what's my preferred, which is I prefer working with people, but we also allow them to do some exploration to click on some of these other types and see that other people prefer working alone. Some people may in some cases want to work alone or sometimes in a group. Same thing with learning environment. So as a former adjunct faculty member myself, I would be interested in finding out what the learning environments for my students are. Um, I personally uh, prefer academic environments. 
but I can see that some of my classmates may prefer a more hands-on learning environment, or they may prefer a balance. Same thing with leadership style risk-taking. We allow them to do a little bit of um, exploration around those. And then we take them to career interests. So based upon the results of the assessment, we provide them with their top six career interest areas. So you'll see for me, those interest areas came up as sales, marketing and advertising, performing arts, athletics, culinary arts. We ask students for each one of their career interest areas to provide us with some feedback. So do they agree? Do they like? Um, are they unsure uh, about a particular career area? Or do they perhaps maybe not like, um, as I've decided, I don't think I would actually like a career in human resources and training. And we do this because we want to um, not only get that feedback, but we want them to, to be thinking about these different career areas, which they may not have been aware of before. In fact, we actually hear students say things like, I didn't even know that was a job, or I didn't know I could get a job doing that. That's something that I love. Um, so we ask them to save their ratings, and then we give them the option to either go to their homepage or to select career pathways. I'll pause there and share that this particular page here in our, our demo site for students, the home page can be customized by our partner institutions so they can actually provide on the landing page um, instructions for how they want students to use the platform. Um, we're happy to share best practices of how our partner institutions are doing this. I mentioned our, one of our partners in Denver, um, the community college, who use this as part of orientation. And we've heard that from a number of partners that they will have students in a group setting, whether it's orientation as part of first year experience, whether it's a, a seminar or a day long workshop, um, they will incorporate a, a session on or multiple sessions on career exploration and doing the interest assessment in Vita Navis. Um, and so they'll actually walk students through this process, but they can um, provide that instruction so that students can go back out on their own and do some additional research. So we give them the opportunity to do an open search if they really want to do that. So let's say I've had my, my whole life, I've thought, wow, I, I really want to be a lawyer. But that didn't come up in my interest areas. I can still do a search to find out what a career um, as a lawyer would look like. Um, or Ideally, we're, we're having them look into what options exist in the career areas that have been recommended. So under marketing and advising, um, I can see all the different types of job titles that are available for marketing um, type careers or marketing and advertising. And I can click on any one of these. The Vita Navis platform integrates with ONET and Bureau of Labor Statistics. So we pull in information about uh, job details and things like salary from ONET and uh, BLS. We are uh, already working on providing this data on a more regional, in fact, not just state level, but even metro region um, uh, uh, basis that's in beta right now. But I can see what the average salary is across the US. I can delve deeper into job details. I can see what are the requirements? What does a typical work day look like? What are some of the common tasks? What are the skills that are required? Um, and then I can also find out what type of education do I need? Um, what type of degree and so forth? And as I'm looking through these jobs, if I find some that I like, I can save those jobs. And after I've picked a few, and ideally students may be looking at um, not just marketing and advertising for example but what could i do if i were to get into athletics right and i can find different jobs related to that and after i've um, saved several jobs i have the ability to go back and look at what i've saved and i can actually uh, do a side-by-side -side comparison for a few of those so let me pick a few here and then when I go down and submit, and obviously this is my demo environment, so I've saved quite a few jobs over the course of time. Um, but I can see what is the job outlook for the different jobs that I've chosen. So you'll see that some of my jobs, they're very steady. Some are in growth mode, some are also green. I can see what that average salary is across the board. I can go through um, things like the knowledge required and level of education. 
And we think this is important. So, for example, you know, some of these uh, may require a higher level degree, a master's degree, or some professional school. Some are, you know, four-year bachelor's degree. So, if I am one of those working adult students, I may have to evaluate what's most realistic for me um, at this point. If I want to be earning a living wage, uh, I may not want to pursue something that's going to require that higher level. And so, it, it helps again for students to make a more informed decision. So that is the um, career pathways tool within Vita Navis. We also give students the ability once they've picked those career pathways, and let's say they are a student who um, maybe hasn't decided on a institution yet, uh, we also provide education pathways. So as I mentioned, we partner both with higher education institutions and with K-12. Um, so we, we work with high schools who may have students taking the assessment um, to figure out where to go to school. We have community college partners that are providing access to the assessment to uh, their uh, high schools in their service area because they want to make sure that the students that do come to their campus are a good match for the programs that they offer. Um, but for our high school students, they can do a search to find institutions. You'll see I've saved some already, um, but if I wanted to find a specific school, I can search by a school name or if I've just done my career exploration and I know that I want to go into education as my um, career, I can pick a specific type of education that I want to get into. So let's say maybe I want to get into instructional media design. I can add additional search categories. So I can say that I want to look um, for a school um, a particular school name, or I can look geographically, which is more common. So I'm going to look around close to where I live. And there are other other uh, filters we allow them to add. You can see that here, but let's just do this for the sake of time. I mean, then I can take a look at any of the institutions that have come up. So we have Saddleback College has come up, and I can see, you know, some details about the school. What, what size is it? Uh, what type of institutions? What the admissions rate is, and so forth and additional details around costs, contact information, and program offerings so I can see. So for this data, we have integrated with iPads. So we pull in all of the programs that are offered at that institution based upon what iPads has uh, uh, reported. Um, also want to point out, if you happen to have a, a significant uh, population of, of Hispanic students, if you're a Hispanic serving institution for that matter, that the site um, is available in Spanish as is the assessment itself. So it's fully translated for students if they wish to uh, take the assessment or do the exploration in Spanish. So those are the um, career and education pathways tools available within the platform. Let me pause again and see if there are any questions before I jump over to the administrator side. And I'm happy to uh, review anything that we've gone through. So let me give everyone a minute to type in a question if you have one. I will point out real quickly in case you're looking and you're trying to see what all of the things are here on my homepage, which again, this is where we would customize and give some instructions to students. So instead of where we just have this bulk, uh, boring welcome to Nita Navis, here's where our partner institutions will customize, um, have co-branding, provide their logo, provide instructions, provide links, whatever they might want to um, direct students to do about how they want them to use the tool as part of their education planning process, that would all be here. And I don't see any questions in the chat box, so I'm going to go ahead and go over and show you some of the administrator features. So what you're seeing here um, is what a advisor might see when they log in. They have the ability to search records. So um, there are different ways that you can uh, establish relationships within uh, Vita Navis. We have what's called uh, an access code, which is what allows people to complete the assessment. That can also be embedded in a link so that students can just click on a link. But an access code might be used, for example, by our partner institutions that are working with different high schools and want to be able to track how many students are enrolling from each high school they might use access code to assign by advisors for case management, or we can pull that relationship in out of a student information system instead. Or I can, as I am getting ready to meet with a student, 
search for a specific student um, to prepare myself for my meeting uh, with that student. And I, I just would let you know that our, our demo system is a little bit slow, so it will take a couple minutes for it to pull up a record, but that's not something that you would experience um, on your home institution. But I can find the student, Holly Eubanks, who's coming in to meet with me. And here is what Holly will see um, when, uh, or I will see rather, when Holly and I sit down to meet. So it's basically what Holly saw, what we just saw on the student side when they see their results. Um, we see what her RIASEC information is, and we can go through and do the same thing that Holly can do. You'll see I'm clicking and I'm seeing what enterprising is, what artistic is. Um, I can see her RIASEC information. I can see her interests and her career interests and how she's ranked those. You'll notice that she agreed with everything except for culinary arts. What we find, um, by the way, when we speak with our partner institutions and they're talking with students who said they, they're not sure or they dislike something, is that oftentimes they're, they've said they're unsure because they really don't know what, what a career in, um, in, in human resources or training would be, or uh, they've clicked don't like because it might be something that's culturally based. So we, we had a partner down here in San Diego that gave us the example of a, a student who was Asian and who really wanted, ironically, since I'm looking at this result where the person said no to culinary arts, he really wanted to study culinary arts, but his family is discouraging him because they believe he should aspire to something higher. So that's a conversation point for the student and maybe even to, to bring in with parents. Um, the, all of this information, by the way, for students in Vita Navis is property of the student. So students can choose to share their information with an institution. And obviously, if your institution has given them access to it, you would be able to see this as a counselor. But after I complete my program at your college, if I decide that I want to transfer to another university, um, I can disassociate so that counselors would no longer be able to see my information. It would still be in that aggregate data that schools have, but it would not be um, accessible. Um, and so uh, that's something that's important to know because we want this to be something that students can continue to go back and look at year after year. And um, if they want to go back for additional education after they finished a two year or go back for graduate education or at any point during their undergraduate career want to reassess their major, they can do that exploration here within the platform. And we're also adding other assessments in that students can access for more um, things like uh, per personal development through personality assessments, for example. And I can also see the students program matches. So this begins the conversation with the student about what programs they might want to pursue and um, how we can plan out their education plan, whatever major that is or program that they've chosen. I can also, um, as a counselor, add notes. So if there's more than one person um, talking with the student, perhaps it's a student who's in TRIO, um, a TRIO counselor can add notes as well as their academic advisor and so forth. And I can also print this out if I wanted to. Um, we find that some of our schools may use the note feature to track the to-do items for a student, for example. So today, uh, Holly and I talked about basic career exploration. Next time she will have done, used the search and compare feature and will focus on settling on a major before the end of this academic year. Another feature that's quite popular um, looks more towards that aggregate student data versus individual student data. So we call this feature classrooms. We initially thought of it as a tool that, that faculty or teachers might use to help inform uh, their classroom activity because you can see um, across your, your students, what are their career themes? So of the RIASEC codes, where do you find most of your students? You can actually click on and find out where all the socials are and who are the ones that are more conventional. You can uh, look by and sort by career interests. So here's a feature that we also make available on our dashboards feature across a university, for example, where are more, most of the students' interests lying. So here we see a lot of students that are um, social and what are some of the career areas that are related to social folks. Um, and then we can also take a look at personal styles. And here is where we, we do see interests not only from faculty, who might want to know from um, a perspective of how to prepare for our classroom activities, what are the different learning environments. So again, as a former adjunct, it would be good for me to know how many do, 
or if my students are hands-on, how many are you know, prefer academic environments, is it a good mix, so that I can plan my lessons around that. Um, and then other things like leadership style or team orientation um, are ways that we can think about using, um, how do we use this information for developing workshops for our students. So if I'm in student services and these are uh, part of my case management, um, how do I want to address that? Or for individual students, maybe uh, those who might be at risk, this is helpful data to know how to interact and best support those students. So we have uh, this ability through our classrooms feature to gather uh, this data together um, in a more aggregate fashion. And then we also have dashboards that we um, have available that can track things if you want to, such as demographics. We don't actually um, have a really good visual for this in our demo environment because We've purposely tried to limit the number of questions that we ask students to, or assessment takers, I should say, to answer when they take the assessment. Um, so we don't have a lot of rich data in the demo environment, but if our partner institutions wanted to add that either as a question to the assessment regarding gender or um, gender identification or ethnicity, they could do that and we could track that or we could pull that in from another source and map it. And then we can also track other things, for example, such as usage. So if you wanted to see how many of your students are completing the assessment, if you're not doing it in a, um, an orientation environment, for example, how many so far have completed the super strong, you'll see we have different other assessments listed here in our demo environment. So it's a little bit muddy, but we do have, um, I'll go back to the student side to show you this. We do have um, the ability to add in institutionally based surveys or things like the student success profile. One thing I just realized that I didn't show you that I think is important, by the way, so I'll do that real quick before we wrap up, is how students um, can see more specific information for their institutions, programs that are offered. Um, if, if this is something where you've given the student the, um, the access to take the assessment to, to do the exploration, you can, um, again, customize this and give them very specific information. Students will see their interest area and the programs that match with those interest areas at your institution. And um, so what I, what I wanted to point out is that um, IPEDS titles, the nomenclature that they use for programs is very generic and very specific. And it may not match exactly what you're using um, for the program or major name on your campus. So we would actually customize these so it will match whatever that major or program is on your campus. And if you are, a same thing with if it's under a college, for example, if you are doing um, meta majors or, or uh, communities, um, we will map to that meta major. So my interests may be in sales, but the meta major on campus is business and family science. It's the meta major name that will show up here. It maps to my interest, but it'll show the meta major name here. And again, the programs will show the specific name that you use on your campus versus that generic IPEDS um, nomenclature that comes in. And I can then see for each of your programs, what are some of the example op occupations? What's the available level? Um, is it associate degree, certificate, or bachelor's, depending upon whether you're a two-year or four-year institution? Um, and can I take that class um, online or is it taught on campus? So that's um, one other key feature that I apologize for skipping over the first time, but um, wanted to make sure that you were aware of that as well. So we're a few minutes away from um, wrapping up. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to type those into the chat box. Um, or as I said, you will receive a follow-up email from us. Um, we will provide you with that access code if you're interested in completing the assessment and taking the self-guided tour of the student side that we just saw. Um, and we are happy to answer any questions that you might have. So you'll have our contact information to reach back out to us as well. Um, and obviously we would be delighted to uh, speak with you one-on-one -on -one if, um, if you're interested in having a conversation. So I'm not seeing any questions in the chat box. I want to end by thanking you for your attendance today. 
Um, we appreciate your interest. We hope that you found this informative and we hope that you'll not only take the assessment that you will circle back with us to continue the conversation. Take care everybody and have a great day.